Jesus, why is there so much Marvel in this DC logo? He went out to fix his shutters in the pouring rain. What he couldn't predict was that he'd fall in love. Jules Verne once wrote, Aquamaration. Put two ships in the open sea without wind or tide. They will come together. Look, I'm not as much of a seaman as Jules Verne was. <laughs> seaman. But the f sense does this make? The lack of wind and the tide negate the very idea of nautical unity. Someone doesn't like the idea of spinning off Florence's character from the Jeffersons into 227. So, uh, who are you? Atlanta, Queen of Atlantis. I'm Tom, Keeper of Lighthouse. This just goes to show that men will go along with any crazy sh if the woman is hot enough. The lighthouse is his erect penis. But in my father's lighthouse, she found something unexpected. Django Fett? Also, movie sure did yada yada Atlanta's whole integration into human society, huh? I know they're in love and sh but Thomas just accepted her entire backstory about underwater royalty? And my father found the love of his life. Well, as long as two completely different species can mate successfully, what's the harm? Legend has it that one day a new king will come. Nursery rhymes position. You are ordered to return to Atlantis. I would love to have known what the investigative process was that led this Aquari army to this location after three years of fruitless searching. All things considered, this is a pretty badass action scene. It definitely plays with special effects to make Moulin Rouge look like a bona fide action star, but I'll take this over the f you were Marvel fight scene anytime. Whoa, whoa, take it easy there, Atlanta. Your husband brings in lighthouse money. They will always find me. I always leave way too much of a credit card paper trail. Fake fish! Fake fish! Fake fish! In case you confused it with the Boston Aquarium in Smack Over Arkansas. Arthur is talking to the fish. Easy boys, even though this is a movie set in New England, it is not based on a bully-filled novella by Stephen King. Being honest, how many people at the aquarium actually saw Arthur's eyes turn yellow there? From this distance, maybe one or two, but certainly not enough to get a collective gasp, right? And why didn't government agencies immediately descend to study the magical talking shark boy? I won't tell you how to captain, and you don't tell me how to pirate. <laughs> What was the point of keeping this asshole alive, if not specifically so that Kane can announce himself as a pirate? I never told you the story behind it. So I will right now, mid-plunder, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna die in the next five minutes. <laughs> Have these pirates never actually pirated before? Sure, Aquaman's a badass, but if they attacked him in any other way than this bull there's no way he'd be winning this fight. Wait, did Aquaman use that bad guy's arms to turn the hatch on this door? F***ing why? Why did Kane wait this f***ing long to open fire? His crew's been dead for at least several minutes, right? Was he in the latrine this whole time? You're the Aquaman. Roll sea turtles. Knowing what Aquaman's strength is in this movie, how the f*** does Manta survive this? Even if this is substantially less force than it took him to, say, push a submarine to the surface, this is still a crushing somebody's skull type of a move, correct? Hey movie, get your Zack Snyder out of my James Wan. Also, Aquaman survives this. I guess he is impervious to bullets, even though Justice League didn't tell us that. But this was a direct hit from one of those big guns, like what took out the T-1000, dammit. Arthur should be dead as f***ing disco right now, not temporarily stunned. I always know where to find you. You mean at his house? Good thinking. How is it that I can breathe underwater, but you can still drink out of the table? Aw, casual familial alcoholism. Now here in Maine, they call that bonding. Of the Navy's highly classified prototype stealth submarine. I'm really f***ing sick of movies using a stupid-ass bar TV that suddenly turned to the relevant news story and has somehow achieved full volume to exposit all over our faces. That's not me. Oh, you're doing it, aren't you? How does Thomas not know this? This is after Justice League, so the entire world saw them resurrect, then fight Superman in Metropolis. You that fish boy from the TV? These guys just want a picture, and it subverts the dumbasses in a bar pick a fight with the metahuman trope we've seen time and again. But who the f*** asked for a picture this way? Oh, cool. They're all arriving for this year's Tri-Wizard Cup. Ah, sudden! Um, who is that? Kinda looks familiar, but I can't make it out. Holy f*** is that Lakeview Terrace is Patrick Wilson? The f*** would actually make that noise? And in water, how does the noise issue even work down here? It's not even like Justice League where Pineapple Express made an air bubble for and Arthur to talk. They're just in the f***ing water. His loyalty is to the sun. Later we find out that Orm conspired with Manta to make it look like humans were attacking an underwater city. So there seems to be a huge flaw in this plan. Like, for instance, Manta could have potentially killed Orm. It takes special skill to make effects look this shitty while being this dark and murky. I'm almost impressed. <laughs> Is this how explosions work? You can just go through them as long as the missile didn't make contact with you and someone blew it up first? We see Mira walking from the water and then... Why the f*** the grand entrance? What even caused that splash? Did she get to the beach and say, oh 
Arthur won't know I'm here unless I make a splashing noise. Go back deeper into the water, then jump back out? Volko has learned the location of the lost trident of Atlan. With the sacred trident, the people will listen to you. But supreme executive power derives from a mandate from the masses, not some farcical aquatic ceremony. Also, can I just start calling Aquaman Aquagorn from now on? I might lapse into that time and again. I'm not married to it. Ooh, fairy tales. It's a myth. Is it really possible to even have fairy tales in a world where Atlanteans exist? Like, after watching superheroes, some of whom are actual deities, defeat alien threats, how does anyone say, no, that it's too unbelievable for me? Drunk driving. That submarine was barely operational, but it served its purpose. One of your kind intervened. So wait, you're telling me that Manta used the Russian submarine that was flooding and that he left sinking the last time we saw it? His dad also blew up a grenade where all the missiles were stored. How'd he get that thing working? Also, oh no, now even the water people are using holograms for communications. What, is calling them water people insensitive? Is that racist? <laughs> Stupid holograms. Also, also, why'd it take five soldiers to deliver this hard candy gram? Look, I've never personally been in a tsunami, but I'm willing to bet that it makes some noise. Arthur could hear the f***ing birds, but not this giant wave that's currently wrecking the shit out of a large fishing boat. I could give the movie a million sins for how dark and murky the action it is, but because I'm in a good mood, I'm only gonna give it, I'll say, 15. Unprecedented sights from all over the world today. All over the world? How does Orm have that much reach? I get that he can pull some shit in the Atlantic, but is he going to, like, Peru, Mumbai, Djibouti? Decades of pollution has been thrown back onto land. Oh, cool. We have time for a ham-handed environmental message in this movie. Luckily, it's nearly two and a half f***ing hours long. Why is this jump necessary? They could jump into any area of the water and swim to Atlantis, but they choose the one where jumping into the jagged rocks below is a possibility. I hit my ship in here. What do you need a ship for? Both of you are ships. Later on, we see that they need to pass some sort of security protocol in Atlantis. But wouldn't said security work a lot better without use of ships? Things that people who swim like fish don't need? And can't hide contraband or stowaways in? Your fish ship has been marinating in chum butter. Weird, this is the same thing I said to my college girlfriend after the first time we had sex without a condom. Oh, sh is a Bifrost underwater now? I can't wait until Thor dukes it out with Aquaman for the throne of sexiest comic book character alive. Atlantis is pretty well populated, right? But really the only traffic we saw were the cargo sea turtles, and the rest of the time, drive angry can zip all over the place with no impedance. This shit should look like the city in the fifth element. We use this air pocket as an extra layer of precaution. Only the highborns can breathe water as well as air. I can guarantee you there is at least one Ethan Hawke and Gattaca type that can breathe air and would if it weren't for his asshole father. The cylinder bears the markings of the desert kingdom. You must take it there and retrieve the message. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why didn't Volko get this done already? It found the recording months ago. Clue to Atlan's final resting place is inside of this. Less than an hour in, this is the third surprise explosion knocking people down instance in this fucking movie. And it's getting extremely annoying. What a hilariously incompetent way to restrain Arthur. They seriously don't have any static objects that are hard to move that they can attach these chains to? Because for a century, they have polluted our waters. Hey, humans have been polluting the water for much longer than a century. Also, this magical video presentation is ready to give you visual confirmation of the human's destruction right here in front of you. Do you want to see Basic Instinct in true 3D? I've got that shit, brother. We can play it right now in pristine Unicorn 8K. But if I win, you're over. Let's do it. Awesome. It's not like I didn't see a much better version of this pissing contest earlier in the year in Black Panther. There's way too much of this. Do we really have to have an extended Rocky montage of Arthur's adolescent training? This could have been a tight, fun romp. I remember everything. But all we saw in that flashback was Arthur remembering that his mom got killed. Nothing about strategy or fighting underwater, but sure, you're ready to fight. Why not? Is this the big old ring of fire, huh? How's it work? Instead of bitching at him for getting into this fight, did Volko seriously not tell him anything about the fight? Will you escort my betrothed? to the royal box. Doesn't she already have the royal box, though? Wow, how did the Atlanteans get Neil Peart down here? You have our mother's trident. Powerful, but flawed, like her. I guess it's not really Patrick Wilson's fault, but he sure does have, like, 40% too much dialogue in this movie. Yeah! Hey, have you ever wanted to watch a same versus same fight with middling effects, but also wanted to puke your guts out? Welcome to this scene! <laughs> Looks like they cut out the scene where Clint Eastwood could tell just by hearing Aquaman swing that he has trouble with the curve. That's why Arthur will never make the Atlantis Braves. So they can go anywhere during this battle? What the hell is most of the crowd even seeing right now? The plan was to recover Atlan's trident, then challenge Orm. Okay, so we're doing things a little out of order. 
Happens. Actual discussion between the screenwriters and the director finds its way into the movie. Also, what choice did Arthur have? Once Iron Man 1, 2, and 3 came in to arrest him, was he supposed to not accept Orm's challenge and hang out in prison until Mira found the Lost Trident for him? Because, as we're about to see, that would have been impossible. Many seconds of a waterlogged chase scene with the prominent involvement of water lasers. Yep, it's exactly as exciting as it sounds. What? Even if there's a tracker on Alpha Dog, how the hell could he possibly catch up to them so fast? Also, it appears that Orm's plan is to glare these two to death. Wait, you said we couldn't go over these walls! She did. And she is somehow going to avoid an unholy phalanx of orange laser sh that would be impossible if not for plot armor. This movie is literally playing a hip-hop cover of Toto's Africa as we pan over the Saharan Desert. And I think my brain just officially curdled. I usually get paid in pirate treasure. So they stepped out of the ocean looking like this, went to a private airport, and hired a guy to fly them over the Sahara without paying up front? The tracking place is Princess Mary here in the desert of Kingdom. The tracker? What tracker? You mean the movie crotch? Look, movie, if you're gonna make a big deal out of Mira practically vomiting because she's never been up this high before, then you can't make her fearlessly jump out of a goddamn airplane without any reservations. And I know it's sand they're about to jump into, but now I've gotta ask, what exactly would kill these two if not this fall? Oh yeah, remember this dude that we haven't seen in almost an hour? No, me neither. Oops, major hologram faux pas there, Manta. One time, Obi-Wan did that to Yoda, and Yoda nearly ended that motherfucker. Converts water into beams of energized plasma. So, a super soaker? I guess Manta's got a Manta, but isn't Kane a fucking pirate? This montage makes him look like goddamn Tony Stark when he's been shown to be a competent but very straightforward thief. Look, Fight Club, I know you're new to how things work up here. Skip! Now we are stranded. <laughs> so, just like that, eh? He just fell down into the secret world in the middle of the desert, buried by mountains of sand. You know, they were given little to no instruction, other than where to go, right? But they're doing everything perfectly in order to complete this inane quest. It's completely dried out. Well, look, sometimes it takes a little while to get things going. Try some more forced pseudo-romantic banter to see if that helps. What are you doing? We need water. We need the closest source. Now hold still. Um, can't they just pee on it? Do they pee? You would think they pee. Could have just peed on it. You see? No, seriously, this one tiny f***ing drop of flop sweat powers this entire thing that previously had to be underwater to work. You should have peed on it! If you seek my power, you must prove your worth. Journey beyond the edge of the world to the hidden sea. This is the exact same quest for Merlin's staff in Transformers The Last Knight. Arthur is, well, King Arthur. And this movie is following the same path The Last Knight did when they went to the alien ship, which was, wait for it, underwater. Only in the hands of the true king can he truly see. Prophecies. What did he just say? Something, something, try it. Is Aquaman supposed to be dumb? I know he's quippy and he drinks a lot, but he seems like he's able to process information pretty well. But in the last few scenes, he's gone completely meathead. In case you confused it with Cicely Tyson, no one will be seated during the A Walk in the Clouds portion of the movie. So many assholes, so little time. Jesus Christ, this is turning into a full-on live-action version of The Little Mermaid without my consent, and I did not sign up for that. Also, seriously, while they're dicking around here, isn't Orm still planning to end humanity and shit? This is the shit that happens way too much in this fucking movie. You're a kingdom of bloated philosophers and flaccid poets. Hey, watch what you say about my university's liberal arts department. Marcus Agrippe. He was a great general, but he wasn't a king. See, he's not stupid, and movie cannot make up its mind if it wants to be consistent or squeeze a cheap laugh out of the audience. How do you know all this stuff? That's my pops. Made sure I knew my history. Yeah, totally. The guy who gets plastered at bars every night and never once mentioned a historical fact ever in this entire movie seems like a real history buff. None of these guys are kings except this guy. Romulus. Why the f*** did the Atlanteans consider Romulus a true king? And isn't the Aquaman story steeped in Greek mythology? Doesn't the whole Atlantis mythology come from Plato? But even more important, why would they use human kings as a guide for their trident hunt? God damn it, stop with the surprise explosions movie. Until you learn your lesson, I'm assigning you 10 cents. <laughs> I know this is a classic villain outfit, and there was an actual reason given about why the helmet is so big, but holy bejesus, this looks so stupid. <laughs> Luckily for Mira, these soldiers went to the finest Stormtrooper aiming school in Atlantis. Also, by the way, there are no tourists at this extremely touristy part of Sicily, especially on this beautiful day, so that we're not bothered by that whole Man of Steel collateral damage issue. Call me Black Manta! <laughs> <laughs> um, did you just say Black Panther? Oh, 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 you said Black Manta. Okay, you're right, totally different. I had Marvel's lawyers on the line there for a second. How'd you find me? Your lady friend has people who like to keep tabs on her. Why bother even telling him this sh even if you're sure you're going to kill Aquaman? Okay, I know I took a sin off earlier for the Mama Aqua fight scene, but this is some really good stuff. I know where the fight is relative to the other fight. I know where they're running. I can see all the pieces coming together. And I can also take another sin off with this very nice camera work. Damn it, movie. Why couldn't we have more of this? Ah!
We've seen Aquaman get full blasted by Black Manta in this movie, and he didn't die. Now we're supposed to worry when he falls off a building and hits a bunch of stuff on the way to the ground? What can actually kill him? This is the Superman problem, only worse because his powers have never been defined. <laughs> Wait, he's had an electric harpoon this whole f***ing time? I didn't even leave with that sh Arthur would never be out of your sights. Did you steal a boat? Yeah, she did. I'm kind of wondering how all that went down, too. They were in Sicily, and she must have carried his unconscious body around while looking for the perfect vessel. And look, I know time is of the essence here, but why not wait until Arthur became conscious and swim there? They are more than fast enough to make up the time it took to sail out here while Mira played her aqua flute. You think I do not know that you have spent years training him? to take the throne from me. We saw Orm give the side eye to Volko earlier in the movie, but otherwise, how does he know this? When does he know this? Why does he know this? And why does he wait until now to bring it up? Movie has time for flower eating in Italy, but can't afford to make this very simple explanation clear. But from the depths, the scan of the light! We interrupt this Aquaman movie to bring you a very special presentation of Pitch Black. Also, man, I take back that shit about Mira stealing a boat. They needed those flares, they had no idea they'd need. So, phew. So that flare's just gonna work underwater, huh? Don't underwater flares require some sort of hose that supplies oxygen, a bubble around the flame, and other science facts? That thing will tear us apart! We don't have a choice! Hmm, why didn't the recording from Atlan say anything about the whirlpool? Seems like if you're going to make people go on a difficult quest to find some stupid trident, you'd tell them about it, especially since there are so many variables in the sea, and this could be something you're supposed to avoid. <laughs> they totally Michelle Pfeiffer Nicole Kidman to the DC version of the Quantum Realm, didn't they? Also, how did Atlanta know to go into the water to save them? Did she sense something in the Force, or was she just swimming around in her Halloween costume? It just happened upon her long-lost son and her other son's ex-fiance. Morvac sacrificed me to the trench, but I survived, fought my way through as you did, and I ended up here. You mean you happen to have some handy flares to ward off the creatures, willingly swam into the whirlpool and got brought to the surface by your mom too? But it is guarded by the Corazon. How many quests do we see in movies where someone like Atlan sets up a quest to find a coveted item, telling them only someone who is worthy can possess the thing, and put them through at least two extremely hard trials, only to tell them now that you're at the place where the thing is, I put one more giant obstacle in your way. The creature will only allow the true king to pass. Then why go through all the other they've had to go through then? If an unbeatable legendary sea creature is just going to play bouncer to the trident, then why all the bullshit? You're afraid. Yes. Good. You're ready. After two minutes of reconciliation that followed 20 years of abandonment, Atlanta can make this proclamation and send Arthur's ass into what should be certain death. A king fights only for his nation. You fight for everyone. How the f*** do you know that? You've been on Temptation Island for 20 years. Yeah, that's right. I pulled out an at least 16-year-old reference to a short-lived trashy reality show on Fox. Wait, they brought that show back? I have guarded the trident against false kings since the beginning and for a thousand years. So, since these would-be kings needed to watch a recording and figure out a puzzle, how many of these bottles with the map did they put down in the floor for people to find? Is there a never-ending Pez dispenser of bottles with maps inside them? I have seen the greatest champions try and fail. Okay, about three minutes ago, we just heard Atlanta say that she tried to go in here numerous times, but it wouldn't allow her because she wasn't the true king. So who the f*** are all these dildos? Was she saying it wouldn't let her go past the waterfall? Or was she saying that she couldn't beat the Karatha? Because if she got this far, shouldn't she have died? No man has ever freed the trident from Atlan's grip. Probably because they were getting their asses kicked by the Karathan. Seriously, why the bullshit quest if Arthur was the only one who could pull the sword from the stone? Or, I mean, trident from the Atlan? You could have stuck this thing in the middle of Atlantis' town square and saved time. Arthur's transformation into king will be brought to you by random pictures of aquatic sea life. The Luc Besson who directed Lucy will be extremely happy. I'd remove 85,000 sins if either Mera or Atlanta said, so did you get the trident? Oh man, I bet these battle crustaceans are delicious if they've been living in a brine all these years. These types of large-scale CGI battles are just noise to me. You might as well put a bunch of static on the screen. See? No difference. Yeah, but he's killing a f ton of the innocent army, right? I know they started it, but all he's really here for is Orm, so he should just be going after him. What's he even need this big angry Kraken thing for anyway? Oh man, they're totally about to fishbone, aren't they? Also, Aquaman and Mira finally kiss, and as if the movie is literally saying f you to its audience, there seems to be some sort of magic invisible bubble keeping them from getting caught in the crossfire of this raging battle. He commands the trench! Impossible! Sure, it's impossible. Just like the giant Cthulhu that Aquaman was riding on was impossible a minute ago. Stop saying is impossible when you've seen previously thought impossible things, Drago. The half-breed wields King Atlan's trident. He commands the sea. 
then that half-breed is your king. This movie half-breeds like it's a goddamn Harry Potter movie. The giant orc crocodile gets ever closer to Aquaman, and he wedges a trident in its jaws to stop him from eating it. But he can talk to this crocodile, right? No need for the trident theatrics. The movie gives four full seconds for audiences to applaud as Aquaman shamelessly poses in victory. It's a long story. I'll tell you later. It really isn't. They tried to sacrifice Atlanta to the creatures of the depths. She survived. She's been living on an island by the hidden sea for 20 years because the island wouldn't let her escape without the trident. The end. And I love you, but you have been misguided. I mean, the first The Conjuring was really good, and you could talk me into the second one after a couple cocktails, but The Nun was really a bridge too far. Are you ready? Let's talk. Is this going to be some Thor Loki in the future? I hope the f not. People of Atlantis, today began in bloodshed. Let it end in joy. I guess one of Mira's powers is the ability to amplify her voice, so everyone within a half mile radius can hear her. I am Aquaman. Seems like you could have come up with something cooler than that, but we'll go along with it, I guess. Jesus, is it a requirement that this fing character has to go an hour of movie time between appearances? Also, this guy is still alive for some reason, and why is he floating on this piece of broken deck? The last time we saw him, he got hit and strangled by a huge ball and chain. Tried to vaporize it, but his head went with it. Crashed into a building, hit many, many rocks, and fell into the water on the shores of Sicily. So he managed to live through all of that and find a piece of wood to float out into sea while he was unconscious? If you men only knew. What is it, Arnie? Oh my god. They found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Where I come from, the sea carries our tears away. Like tears in rain. When the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, then you shall return to me, my sun and stars. And I killed a guy with a trident. Hi, doggy. He gave it to me when I was your age. I hid this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass two years. But what is this salty discharge? Tastes like crap. Talk like you. Crap. It's just beer. Break. It's just beer. I wish I could be part of that world. By the power of Grayskull. 